With certain types of plants, moss poles can be very beneficial. Most monsteras, epipremnums and philodendrons need vertical support to grow to their maturity and have those big and gorgeous leaves. Moss poles can provide that support and their main benefit is that they also extend your growing medium. Your plant will root in the pot and also into the pole itself. You can see my monstera here has firmly rooted itself into its moss pole and stands up on its own. It's not tied to it at all. To make a moss pole you only need three things. Sphagnum moss. You can get it online but I have to say it's rather expensive and not always sourced sustainably. So do your research and know where it's coming from. Alternatively, you could swap it or mix it with coconut chips or tree fern fiber. There is a lot of substitutes, but in my experience, sphagnum moss does the job best. Next, you'll need some strong wire netting. I use coated chicken wire. It's important that it's sturdy since it will support our plant throughout its growth. Finally, some zip ties or string, whatever you have available, as long as it's able to secure your pole firmly. To start, you need to rehydrate your moss. Working with dry moss doesn't really make sense since it's very stiff and crumbly. Soak your moss in water for about 10 to 15 minutes until it's nicely rehydrated and soft. While your moss is rehydrating, cut your wire netting. The thickness of the pole impacts the stability and water retention. The thicker the pole, the more water it will hold, and the longer it will do so. If you have a Monstera deliciosa or Philodendron giganteum, it's better to go on the thicker side, as the pole will be able to support something heavier. You don't have to make it very tall straight away, because most poles can be easily extended. I keep mine 50 cm long, and when my plants reach the top, I just stack another pole on the current one. Once your moss is ready to go, squeeze out the excess water so it's not dripping all over your floor. You want to add enough to your pole so it will be sturdy. If this is your plant's first pole, you should leave the bottom 10 to 15 centimeters empty. That's the part that will be anchored in the pot and you'll fill it with soil. I typically do the ends first, then the middle, then everything in between. You don't need to put zip ties in every spacing, but you want to add enough so there is no chance of any moss falling out. When trimming your zip ties, make sure you turn them inwards. You don't want them to damage or scar your plant's leaves if they happen to touch them. You don't have to use your moss poles right away. Once dried out, they keep very well and will patiently wait until you need them. Since making moss poles can be a bit messy, it's nice to make multiple in one go so you can grab one whenever you need it. Let me know if you end up making one, your plants probably will be really happy about it.